Hello again, everybody. It's Pastor Nick here. And uh, today we are in 1 Corinthians 7, 25 through chapter 8 and verse 13. Uh, as we begin in chapter 7 with the 25th verse, we see Paul make a statement similar to what he made at the beginning of this chapter. He says, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment. Uh, so something that needs to be pointed out when you read this is that while Jesus did not give clear instructions regarding what Paul was about to write, we must remember that Paul was under inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God while he was writing this. Uh, the writers of the Bible didn't necessarily realize that they were actually being moved by the Holy Spirit to write these things. So who is really the author of this letter and the rest of the Bible? It is God through the Holy Spirit's working and moving on these men to write these things. So we can count on what is written. Paul writes about virgins here. He says that if someone is married, let them stay married. But if they are unmarried, let them stay unmarried if they can. And Paul then says that being married does bring its troubles into our life. Essentially, Paul is saying that the person who is single can actually focus completely on the things of the Lord, whereas the person who is married must focus on taking care of their family needs much of the time. So Paul's not saying that having a family, being married and having a family is a bad thing, but he's simply pointing out the fact that he was able to focus completely on the ministry that God had placed him in. Uh, and so to make a long story short, he says that if you can control yourself and God has granted you the ability to refrain from sexual desire, stay unmarried and focus on the work of the Lord. But if you cannot, then get married and seek to serve the Lord together with your spouse. Uh, in chapter 8, we read about eating meat that was dedicated to idols. We discuss this a little bit in the book of Romans, and the message is essentially the same here. Meat is meat. The idols that this meat were dedicated to are not real gods. Uh, they are dead, and there is no life in them. There is only one true and living God. Therefore, Paul says, there is no problem eating this meat. However, it may offend a weaker brother. We should care about what our brethren uh, might uh, think and what might cause them to stumble. Paul says, if it is going to make my brother to be offended, then I will not eat it. And Paul says, when we knowingly make our brothers and sisters stumble, we commit sin in the process. The sin is not in the eating of meat, but in that we used our liberty that we have in Christ to cause another's conscience to be hurt. So we need to be careful of the things that we do and the things that we say. In Proverbs 21, verses 5 to 10, uh, verses 5 and 6 deal with wealth and how one obtains it. Uh, the diligent and wise person thinks and plans, and it produces plenty while the hasty and foolish person just rushes into things and it doesn't quite work out right for them. There are also those who obtain treasure by lying. And Solomon says that it is vain and empty and ultimately leads to death. Verse 7, it goes back uh, to the thought, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So if you are a thief, you will eventually be caught and brought down because of it. In verse 8, this verse contrasts the devious with the upright. In verse 9, Solomon again writes about a quarrelsome wife, a wife who likes to argue and likes to fight. And he says that it is better to sleep on your roof. And what he is saying is choose your spouse wisely, because if you do not, you are in for trouble in your life. In verse 10, this verse reveals that some people just like evil and they like doing evil. And they can be mean to all those that are around them, and their neighbors will have to put up with it. They're going to have to put up with them. Uh, and so uh, don't be one of those people. Uh, be kind. Uh, be, uh, be nice. Be friendly. And reflect the love of Jesus. Let's bow our heads. I wonderful God, thank you again for your word. Thank you for this week. 
Uh, God, we just ask uh, that you would help us to continue serving you and living for you. And God, we ask that you would just bless your services on Sunday. We just pray that you're uplifted and exalted in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.